So come second half of the season, you know, obviously kind of a tough end with the Bemidji State Series at the first uh, half of the season. But how do you guys kind of get, kind of refocused, re-energized here as you kind of hit the home stretch here for the second half? Yeah, you, you know, when we when we played that series at Bemidji State, um, you know, Bemidji State played really well. They, they got exactly what they deserved on that weekend. Um, that being said, we feel like our group needed the break. Um, obviously, have been through a lot, injuries, off-ice situations, and, and we were running on fumes. You know, our guys needed to be able to go home, decompress, be with their family, uh, relax and, and recharge their batteries, and they did that. And, and now coming back, uh, our focus has been on these last 14 games. How do we prepare for them? What's our what's our motivation? Where do we think we're going to be? What are our goals? You know. So this this weekend with Ohio State is our opportunity to close out our non-conference portion of our schedule. Um, everybody knows that that it's a big deal. You know, this series with Ohio State, home and home. Uh, both teams really enjoy the series. You know, our guys get to go down to Columbus and play in the shot, and their guys get to come to Slate and play in a, in a really good environment here. So it's a it's a fun series. It's in a series we always look forward to, um, and for both teams, uh, important in that we everybody went home from their break uh, in college hockey, coming back excited for the second half. How long you stay excited for the second half is determined by what you do, how, how well you play and how things go, right? You might be excited for the second half for five days or, you know, five games or five weeks. It doesn't, you know, just depending. So our goal is to be excited the whole second half and have something to play for. And so this weekend is the start of the second half. So our guys are excited. Uh, we're getting healthier. Uh, we've, we've got more options available at all three positions. So that's, that's a good thing for us. What is it about, you know, playing Ohio State that you – kind of enjoy the most. I mean, this series goes back, you know, so many years, obviously, you know, a you know, couple of hockey teams in Ohio. Just what is it about this series that, that you kind of enjoy the most? I think first and foremost, we've been in a league together for a very, very long time. You know, uh, the CCHA was synonymous to Ohio State and, and Bowling Green. And so that rivalry has been there forever, you know, and, and it's unique in that only in hockey did we consistently play home and home four times a year, you know. Uh, and, and for us to be able to continue that, even though we're now in different leagues for hockey, is great. And then obviously there are a bunch of Ohio State fans uh, in and around Ohio. It's a big deal. So, you know, we get a bunch of Bowling Green fans that go to Ohio State and watch us play down there, and they've got a bunch of Ohio State fans that maybe don't go watch hockey games in Columbus, but they live in Sylvania and they want to come watch Ohio State play here. So. Uh, you, you combine the, the the history and the tradition of the of us being uh, rivals within a league, and then you combine the uh, passion for both programs and both institutions. It, it just makes for a great series. And obviously, you know, looking at the exhibition, you know, Christian Stover came back and played some time in goal. You know, how nice was it to get him back a little bit? And what did you kind of see from him that you know can kind of help you? Guys? Yeah, I mean, it was it was. Uh, it was good to be able to get them back, you know, and, and I, I told someone the other day that the exhibition games at the beginning of the year, to me, are easier because you're just, nobody knows what to expect. You're going you're gonna to go out there and, and more often than not, you've got more healthy bodies than you have uh, opportunities to play. So you're trying to figure out what, how do we get everybody involved, you know, and every, every coach treats them differently. And, uh, you know, you plan these things and you put these things on the schedule a year out or in the summer and, and it. In theory, it looks awesome, right? And then you get into the year uh, for us, and, and okay, so Christian's been hurt. Uh, what's What do we want there? And so our thought with him was, let's Christian's going to start, and Christian will play at least half the game and get him back in the net, get him in a game-type situation, uh, get him comfortable, get him back in there. He hadn't been in there in a month, um, so that was good. Um, he said he was nervous, which was unique because he's a guy that has played a bunch of hockey, but he has, he's been out a month. It's just his first chance to come off an injury. He's been the guy for two years that was uh, part of a goaltending tandem that turned into, it's your net, Christian, <laughs> run with it, right? Both his freshman year and his sophomore year, that happened to Christian. So this is kind of the reverse scenario for him, so it was unique for him. Uh, obviously, the, the, the way things started didn't go great. We gave up two goals early. Uh, but Christian got a chance to get in there and, and face some 
some live action against a, a, a different team than, than us in practice. So he will we'll take that, you know, and then in regards to our other players, you know, we only had five healthy D. So we're trying to give all our goalies a chance. You know, Cole was, was you know, was going to get in there. How long Cole played was to be determined. Then uh, obviously we got Pete in there late, you know. So, and then on the back end, we had five healthy D. So you don't want to overplay those guys because we've been overplaying those guys for a month, you know, which which is hard. And then up front, we had 14 healthy forwards dressed. We, we sat Ryan O'Hara because Ryan... Uh, he could have played. We just felt like it was in his best interest that he just rest. And and so we have 14 forwards. It's hard to. There's not enough ice time for everybody. They want to. They want to play more. You know. So you're trying to get. You know. We have Adam Shankula, who's a new player. So we want to get Adam some some experience. You know. So we put him out there in some different situations. So we could uh, not only for him but for us to see see how he reacts. And then you're you're moving guys around. So um, other than the the result, we felt like. Uh, a lot of the things we value in a game, uh, our guys did a good job of. We had, you know, double the attempts of Windsor. Uh, we did a, a really good job with our discipline. Um, we had a bunch of grade A opportunities. Uh, would we have liked to score more on the power play? For sure. We had six opportunities and, and didn't score. But we had four different units going, so guys got opportunities. And one of the things we've talked about going into the second half is we all, as, as a group, need to value production versus potential. You know, our guys all want to play. Okay, you want to play, then go out there and, and produce, and then you'll get what you want. So uh, we used it for a positive. Uh, we, we talked about some things uh, after the game was over, and now we've moved on to, to this weekend. How do you feel like Adam slotted in? To... Yeah, he did, he did a good job. I mean, it, it, it's tough. I, I said, how did you feel? He said, well, I, I felt, you know, I was nervous, um, but I felt like I, I could put some pucks in some spaces and, and do some things that I was doing in junior hockey, it didn't necessarily work out the same way uh, against Windsor. And in Windsor, to their credit, they had some some older guys were, who were experienced who made really good plays with their stick. They didn't need a lot of opportunities to score, and, and when they did get those opportunities, they took advantage. And that's something we can learn. Guys, we, we got attempts, but when you get attempts, you need to, to finish. And that's because ultimately, the team who has the most goals at the end is going to feel better. Plan and goal this weekend uh, between you know Christian and Cole. Or is that still kind of to be yeah, determined? Yeah, we're we're going to take it game by game. Right now, Cole's starting uh, Friday night down in Columbus, and and we'll we'll worry about Saturday on Saturday. Any more questions from you guys? How do you feel like the the five D as you're trying to get guys healthy? How do you feel like they came out of it? They came out of it healthy. We didn't overplay anybody. The five D has turned into six. Dalton Norris was cleared yesterday. Dalton had been practicing in a red non-contact jersey and, and uh, progressing and getting his conditioning back under him uh, and got the go-ahead to, to play yesterday. So he's practiced you know, with contact and gone up and down the rink and put himself in some stressful situations. So it'll be nice to have Dalton available. We all know, you know uh, what kind of player he is and what kind of role he can have for us. Uh, we'll see how things go. We're, you know, we're going we're gonna to put him out there. Ultimately, it's going to take him a little bit of time to get adjusted to game speed because just like... Adam, or just like Christian, he hasn't been in a game for, for a while. So he, he's going to have to get into the game in, in Columbus and, and uh, ultimately adjust to that. And then uh, we'll, but, but, but we're happy to have six and, and we'll see how things go. All right, then a couple of questions from the chat. All right, whenever you guys are ready. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, cool. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned about that robbery back in the day. How big is it having that home game? I mean, obviously, it's always the biggest crowd of the year, and the atmosphere, it just seems different when Ohio State comes to town. Yeah, you're you're right, Ben. You know, and it has to do with the fact that um, everybody knows that Ohio State's a big deal in the state of Ohio, right? You know, they... Uh, 50 some maybe 60 some thousand students it's Ohio State is, is a big deal and so for us to be able to on an annual basis have them come play us is, is you know it doesn't happen often that Ohio State in any sport comes to Bowling Green to play uh, we get them here every year and that's great and, and, and I know our fans appreciate it I know their fans appreciate it I know both programs and coaches appreciate it so it means a lot to be able to continue the series with Ohio State yeah obviously they did 
past years that had one of the best goalies in the nation. Now he's gone. You know, what have you liked from what you've seen from scouting them um, going into this weekend? Yeah, you know, they, they played on Saturday as well. They played a, a, a non-conference game against Mercyhurst. They, they get up and down the rink really quick. Like, they are... they turn and go in transition. They, they want to try to score off the rush. Uh, they put a lot of stress on you defensively because of their speed, and we're going to have to be aware of that. Uh, their, their special teams uh, were good against Mercyhurst. Uh, you know, they've, they've got a really good non-conference record. Uh, their record in the Big Ten isn't what they want it to be, I'm sure, uh, but the Big Ten right now is probably, if not the best, as good as any league in the country in terms of the pairwise and, and the overall. So, uh, we have to be ready. They're going to be ready to play us. They're going to be excited to play us. They're going to be, you know, uh, they're going to be chomping at the bit. And we told our guys today, like, this is going to be a, a game where if we're not ready right away, it, it we're going to be, we're going to regret that. So we got to be on our toes right away, ready to, to win a bunch of races because they're, uh, to us, they look very, very quick on film. Thanks, Coach. Hey, Coach, how are you doing? Good. Josh Nobler looked uh, really good on Saturday. His feet were moving. I thought it was one of his best games of the year. What do you uh, project from him or expect from him for the rest of the season? I, I would agree with you, Peter. He, he was real good, and, and Josh was a game-time decision. He came to the pregame skate in the morning and said, I didn't sleep hardly at all last night, Coach. I felt terrible, da 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 I said, well, listen, it's an exhibition game. If you're here at 4.15 in the afternoon, uh, then you'll play, and if I don't see you, then we'll know you're not playing. And he came, said he wanted to give it a go, and, and he was dangerous. He, he scored a real nice goal, he hit a crossbar on a power play. He was noticeable. So uh, it, it looked like the break did Josh some good, and uh, we feel like you know that line with, with Ryan O'Hara and, and Brody Waters, with, along with Josh, is, is a really good line, and to have those guys all healthy and feeling good makes us a better team. But, yeah, you're right. I, I agree Josh was – was one of the guys that, that we felt did a really nice job on Saturday. Okay. What do you, uh, are you, are you going to keep, you know, pushing on him to, and, you know, put the expectations higher on him? I mean, you know, the last number of years, you know, he was drafted and, and it just feels like he hasn't developed as much as, as, you know, was projected to, but you still think there is uh, room for improvement and, I, I think the big thing with him is always his consistency game to game. Yeah, I, I don't want to put any pressure on Josh. Uh, Josh knows exactly where he fits within our program. Josh, I think now is is really comfortable knowing when he comes to the rink what uh, what type of role and, and how much he'll play and in what situations he'll play. Uh, so that's a big piece to it. You know, any anytime uh, there's there's lack of production or a player isn't necessarily maybe playing to. Uh, people's opinion or, or up to up to his or her potential. Uh, a lot of that can be, you know, pressure from the outside. Uh, I think Josh is confident right now. Uh, Josh feels comfortable playing with Ryan and, and Brody. Josh knows he's going to, uh, you know, if he, he can make a mistake and, and he's going to be back out there because he's earned that. And uh, we expect Josh to have a good second half. We expect that line to have a good second half. Um, it, it, you know, uh, again, those are players that... Uh, they should expect that from themselves too. Josh should feel good about the second half and expect himself to have a, a really good second half. And, and uh, the better Josh Nodler plays, the better it is for us. Yeah, I agree. And uh, what, one final thing, big thumbs up for the six o'clock Saturday start. So <laughs> see it in the future. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Going, yeah, it's interesting, Peter. We've talked about that. Uh, you know, a lot of times we're, in regards to CCHA play, we're probably the only team in the league that uh, that bases its schedule on other sports on campus. And I don't mean that in, in a bad way. I mean that in that, you know, there's days where we have a, a home women's basketball game, a home men's basketball game, and a home hockey game. And we know we've got fans that want to go to all three. And we try to schedule accordingly to allow that to happen. And we also have people that work behind the scenes uh, at both venues that, that have to go from, you know, women's game to men's game to hockey game or men's games to women's game to hockey game. So it's hard to do that. I mean, Money Mike is a miracle worker, but he can't be everywhere. So, uh, but yeah, I, I think you're right. I think on days that, that we don't have those conflicts, Peter, the, the six o'clock start can be a positive uh, because it just allows, you know, especially within our league, it allows for the team that's that's traveling back to get home 
an hour earlier. Um, but but again, a lot of times it's it's out of our control. But I thought for for the first time doing it six o'clock, it was a positive. 